questions of doom. Hello and welcome back to another Questions of Doom! In this series, as ever, I attempt to answer questions that you send my way using the archaeosoup at gmail.com email address, as displayed on the YouTube channel homepage, but as you'll also see at the end of this video. In answering these questions by video, it is my fond hope that the answer is not only useful to the person who's asked the question, but also anyone else out there who may be wondering the same thing. Now, today's question I think goes to the heart of what many people think archaeology is and, um, and it's certainly worth far more consideration than, than you might initially think uh, and actually to be honest more consideration than I initially thought uh, and the, the question is very simple it's actually a statement really um, Ralph said this here's a question for you is antiquarianism archaeology and I have to say Ralph I'm not gonna lie when I got that particular question on the Facebook page, I was a little bit, I was in a bit of a bad, bad mood. I'd had a bit of an annoying piece of news. And uh, I was a, a gnat's wing, a hair's breadth away from just responding very quickly and slightly sharply, no, go and look at a dictionary. <laughs> um, but I'm so glad that I didn't because uh, you know I, I really don't like it when my bad mood gets the better of me if, if I am in a bad mood. And uh, and the more I thought about it, the more I thought, actually, this, this question is, on the one hand, very, very easy to answer. Let me just get that, get that out of the way. Very easy to answer. But on the other hand, there are elements, there are things when you scratch the surface which are worth just flagging and commenting on. So thank you so much, Ralph, for that question. There's no such thing as a bad question. There can, though, be bad mooded answers, as it were. Now, um, I'm actually going to start by taking my own advice and checking the dictionary. So first of all, let's have a look at the dictionary definition for antiquarianism. Uh, relating to or dealing in antiques or rare books. Antiquarian booksellers, for example relating to the study of antiquities uh, and also a person perhaps who studies or collects antiques or antiquities. So that's a di dictionary definition of, uh, of, I suppose, an antiquarian. Now let's have a look at the dictionary definition of an archaeologist. Um, or rather archaeology and therefore archaeologists. Um, the study of human activity primarily through the recovery and analysis of the material culture and environmental data that they have left behind. Now this is this is where I say that this question on the on the face of it is very easy to answer. Uh, if you look at the two different definitions, one is all about the stuff. Usually antiquarians like old stuff, stuff which they can sell often for a profit, uh, certainly stuff which is um, for having uh, and, and its value comes from its its age. So an antiquarian is, is a stuff obsessed, obsessed person um, and often a person who, who uh, um, surrounds themselves with stuff in their private lives from ancient times and perhaps even gets involved in the, the, the darker side of the trade in antiquities. Um, an archaeologist, however, is interested in what the stuff can tell you, the people who left the stuff behind which entered the archaeological record. And, and yes, okay, this stuff often ends up on display in museums, but usually they're interested in, in how that stuff can be used to tell a story about people in the past. But, <laughs> uh, even though the, the answer is straightforward and simple, I could just end this video there, it's worthwhile reflecting, I think, on, uh, on the fact that it's not that simple. If we consider, for example, two fictitious archaeologists, Lara Croft and Indiana Jones, these are, are two of the most famous, um, I suppose, representatives, symbols of, of archaeology, certainly in popular culture around the world. And what they are, are, I suppose, stuff-obsessed. Usually they're chasing down individual treasures or, uh, or individual uh, keys to get into tombs full of treasure. And yes, okay, they have to have some background knowledge of, of cultures which may help them in their quest, maybe in reading languages or in, in, uh, in uh, solving riddles, but they're not necessarily there to inch by inch record a site, for example. Uh, and as we saw in, uh, in a recent playthrough of, Lara, of the most recent Lara Croft game, sometimes whole tombs get destroyed or even blown up on their adventures. So Lara Croft and Indiana Jones as, I suppose, ambassadors for archaeology aren't very good ones because they're stuff obsessed. Now you may be going, oh well Mr. Soup, sat at home as an archaeologist, I am not stuff obsessed, I am a good archaeologist, yes. But 
You see, I think this actually seeps into archaeology too. Often we become fixated on the things we find. Um, on, a, on a, uh, For example, a Roman dig, maybe a beautiful ring has been discovered, or a, a particular statue, or a head, for example, at Binchester. Um, maybe we become really enamoured with some leather shoes which have been discovered, for example, in York. And we start to sort of forget to ask questions about the people behind that stuff. Now, in the case of, for example, at Binchester, I know full well that actually they are asking questions about what the art style meant for the society and who might have carved it and this kind of thing. But sometimes the stuff, certainly in the headlines of these sites, and therefore often in, in our minds, can start to overtake the story of the people. So in some ways, actually, I think the, the risk of being an antiquarian, of being stuff-obsessed, is a very real one for archaeologists. If we actually uh, take this further and flip the coin, some people who are named antiquarians, people who, for example, were studying the past and studying things from the past before archaeology became a thing. Um, some of these people, such as famously, probably most famously, William Stukeley, uh, 17th and 18th century antiquarian. Um, some of these people are, are actually incipient early uh, landscape archaeologists, for example, putting Stonehenge in a landscape context. Sure, making lots of assumptions, which, which we, later we, we, as we prove to be wrong or we sometimes dismiss as being naive, but nonetheless trying to figure out what the monument means. And isn't that, is that not archaeology um, or a form of archaeology? Now, clearly, people who are antiquarians, um, uh, especially, for example, fr from the 16th and 17th into the 18th and 19th centuries, did start to take on that hoarding, selling, um, um, curiosity cabinet owning sort of uh, uh, mentality. But out of that actually came archaeology out of that out of that the most the most i suppose the most earnest studiers of the of this material became archaeologists and even though yes there there are there are horror stories of vicars going out and digging barrows in a weekend and just finding useless bones um <laughs> Uh, there are people um, uh, who, out of that, out of these 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 things that they collected, uh, started to create theories, for, such as the Three Age system, the uh, the Stone, the Bronze, the, uh, and the Iron Age, for example. So it, it's 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 very interesting actually. The more you sort of scratch at this stuff, the more you think, ah, perhaps archaeologists sometimes need to check themselves and make sure that that they're not too stuff obsessed. Now, how can we do that? What are the alternatives to being, I suppose, uh, stuff and artifact obsessed? Well, one is one which actually I flagged in this month's, uh, or sorry, last month's Soup News. Um, and that was be, would be, for example, the work of Sarah Parkak, who uses the, the very definition of remote sensing, uh, satellites in orbit, to try and understand archaeological sites. She's not really stuff obsessed, uh, necessarily. Um, she uses stuff to find stuff, but I suppose if we if we go too far with this and with this uh, um, reference, it's gonna it's gonna just completely fall apart. But the point is, she's trying to find archaeological sites using pictures. She's not collecting trinkets, and she's not obsessed with what's been found on a particular site. She's very quickly moving from one photo to the next to try and identify archaeology. Um, Another, uh, I suppose, alternative would be uh, landscape modellers, uh, people who study the environment. If um, if you are, for example, using pollen to understand how a whole landscape uh, was in the past, okay, that is stuff, but you are, by definition, trying to understand the big picture. Uh, a, a batch of pollen, not only is it not something which you can necessarily become totally obsessed with, although I do know some people who would be, um, but also as well, you you are usually trying to put that into a bigger story, a bigger picture. So that, that's that's certainly an archaeologist who's not stuff, you know, an artifact obsessed. Um, people who try and model the environment often use, for example, things like ice cores, which unless you have a, a deep uh, a, a deep pocket, it's going to be de very difficult to keep an ice core at home uh, in the temperatures which are required. So again, there's an archaeologist who's, who's probably a little less touched by stuff and therefore a little more pure, perhaps, in their, in their thinking. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating slightly. And, and then also there, there are those who look at the psychology and the neuroscience of the past who, yes, okay, they, they, they might be a bit obsessed with stuff because they have to study, for example, skulls and, and brains and, and the thinking of people, uh, which often revolves around stuff. 
But again, it's hard to, or harder perhaps, to just rely on one thing, uh, you know, one, as I said, one ring, one trinket, one, one treasure, one artifact. So these, these are archaeologists and, a way of do, and ways of doing archaeology which don't rely and revolve around individual things, individual stuff. Uh, and, and to be honest, I'm really scratching the barrel here. I'm really trying to, to see the other side of the coin because because actually any good archaeologist, no matter how nice this stuff is, no matter how shiny and impressive this, for example, this Canon lens cover is, um, <laughs> or, or for example, this uh, this Wales uh, tea coaster is. Oh, it's never going to tell me the story of this particular office. Uh, all you know is that I have a camera and uh, an affinity for Wales at this point, based on that evidence. And and if an archaeologist is in fact asking the right questions, it's, it will be hard for them also to become stuff obsessed. Uh, as long as they're constantly asking, uh, why is the stuff here? What does it mean for the people who put it here? Um, and also, uh, you know, attendant questions about, for example, the environment and, uh, and the, the buildings and the, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, but this really, I suppose, brings me back to, back to the main point. And that is, even though, yes, I, I've asked some questions here and, I, and I've sort of, I suppose, challenged some archaeologists about their, their tendency to be a little bit stuff obsessed. Really, by definition, antiquarians are, are and can only really be obsessed with stuff and its value, both intrinsic and also in terms of an old, uh, you know, as an old object, um, which often come, uh, adds to the intrinsic value. Whereas an archaeologist, um, while they can lean towards being a bit stuff obsessed, um, should be should be asking about the people behind the stuff, the people underneath the stuff, the people, um, in fact, incidental to the stuff as well. Sometimes um, the stuff can be about can be about, for example, environments, or can be about uh, a, an activity which only hints at people, and therefore actually they're, 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 they're desperately trying to claw their way to the people who are who are in the background of the stuff which has been found. So, um, so in many ways, a very simple question to answer. No, definitely not. Antiquarianism is not archaeology, um, but it did lead to archaeology. And if you're, and I suppose this is all about really if you, whether or not you're asking the right questions of certain artifacts. Um, one final, one very final thought that's just literally just popped into my head. It is possible, of course, to treasure something because someone owned it. So, for example, uh, there are people who treasure uh, locks of hair from famous people in history, Napoleon Bonaparte, for example. Um, and you could say, well, that's that's antiquarianism and archaeology. Oh. But again, it's not it's not really a question which is or it's not really a, a sequence of questions which are trying to get, uh, ascertain the circumstances of, say, Napoleon's life or the people in his society. That is just yet again, I suppose, uh, adding to the value of the stuff because it has a provenance, and that is that is once again leaning towards being stuff obsessed. So that's just that's just popped in just now into my head. Um, Anyway, guys, hopefully this has been uh, a, an interesting answer to what might have seen, seemed to be a fairly very uh, straightforward, if not borderline, uh, daft question. But uh, as, as I do try to encourage people to realise, there's no such thing as a daft question. Uh, and even though I very nearly responded in a grumpy way, I'm really glad that I've actually taken the time to think about this one. And uh, indeed to share my thoughts with you. If you have any thoughts, uh, please do comment below. I'm sure that Ralph would love to read them, as would I. And uh, once again, thank you so much, Ralph, for sending in that question. And I'm so pleased that I didn't just go <laughs> because, um, well, no one likes a sourpuss. And also, frankly, I would have regretted it because it is actually quite an interesting question once you think about it. Um, so as I say, thank you so much. As ever, guys, until next time, whatever you're up to, do take care. Bye-bye.